this the picture that John and Lisa gave us. God, it was so like turning the news on to some extent and hearing some of the, the way the world is. The next bit is the other side of that for me. Um, this is the community panel. Uh, the great credit for me, Paul Evans, by the way, was, was to try and find out who will give a good account of what great work is going on in the community in the face of those awful uh, things that John and Lisa were going on about. And I've met these three people who, in tough areas of our city, are really doing great work. Uh, voluntary, and in some cases paid, and it's been a great privilege. I'm going to introduce them now and then hand over to them. Everybody's a bit nervous. Um, uh, you think that's water, it's not. <laughs> um, so anyway, this is Gosha, Gosha McCain. She runs something called Merseyside Polonia. This is Jake, and he's a young man from the Norris Green area, although he lives in Chocolate, I think, and he's doing great things out there. And this is Odette, who met John Harris. Uh, I think he owes her a few bob, I think. I think he probably would have yeah. uh, This is Odette, and she's doing great work in the Kensington area, which she'll tell us about, and it'll give us hope for what comes next. So I'm going to hand over to Gosha now. Hi. Um, my name is Gosha McCain, and when I started working in the Polish, uh, I think often they have the kind of image in the head, migrant worker. Yeah? Uh, actually, it wasn't the work that brought me here, it was love. I fell in love with George. And so I guess maybe I should be called migrant lover. <laughs> um, but I think that's one of the problems with calling people migrants. You can put in one bag lots of people, and we sometimes don't listen to the individual stories. And I think the stories are important. When I came here, I came in 2000, and I was madly in love. I met George's family, lots of friends, and I can see some of you here. Right? And I thought that Liverpool was the friendliest city in the world. That was my perception of the city and I still feel like that about it. Um, but then Poland joined the European Union in 2004 and there was a wave of migration from Poland here. In Liverpool it was more around 2006-2007 and suddenly I could hear everywhere Polish voices. At that time actually I felt more like the local community and I was thinking what are you doing here? <laughs> Um, so I think I actually understand that problem that people had, that suddenly there was a big wave of migration and people were not explaining what that means, what would happen, what kind of impact it would have. Okay. And I was just being in. Okay, is this working? Um, and like I said, I felt very much like the local community and I felt responsibility to make a change, to make a difference because I realized there is some problems there. There was a bit of tension um, and I thought, what changed? When I came here, people wanted to meet me, wanted to ask me if I know Valencia and Vida, uh, and later on they asked me if I drink vodka. <laughs> I found there is a change, change perception. And there was lots of negative stories in the media and that was really sad for me um, because I just thought the media was just showing the bad side of it and I thought that's not the truth. So I felt responsible to show what, what the real community is. So I wanted to pay something back to the local community to welcome me here and say let's come and meet Polish people. And I wanted to pay something back to my roots, to Poland and the Polish community that came here. So in 2008, we started to organize meetings. We call it Mary St. Polonia, meet your neighbors. Because sometimes we live next to each other, but actually we don't know each other. And I know that now it's scary because we can be accused of anything really if we come up to people and smile to them and we still want to talk to them. So sometimes you need to create that space when it's safe to be different and to ask questions and not to be accused that you are racist. I think that was something that really shocked me here. People are so afraid of asking questions just because they could be accused that they're against somebody. No, actually asking questions is good because you can find information. And I would say I don't mind anybody asking any questions, and most of people don't. So be brave and do that because it increases your knowledge and what you know about different communities. So with Mary Psychologia we created that space where people could meet. But that was initially just a project that we wrote with George to Yellow House. Yeah, like that. I met so many people who wanted to be involved because they felt like they don't want the media to 
show that negative image. We wanted to show what we bring here, because it's not just us working, I don't know, 24 hours a day, that seems to be the image. And actually, lots of the Polish people initially when they came, they arrived to Kensington. Some of them started shops, some of the boarded up houses were renovated and they moved in. So I kind of saw there was lots of positive, uh, positive things that happened, but sometimes they were not really shown to the media. So again, part of what I was doing was developing relations with the media, because often we don't know the facts, it's the media who create the story, and the media who give us the truth. Is that really the truth? Are we really believing it? And actually, are we willing to dig a bit deeper to find out what the facts are? So whenever there was a report on migration, I was really grateful to BBC or CD Talk or ITV. So they called me to ask, what's my opinion? What's the other side? Because sometimes <coughs> the reports for me were kind of just showing the one side. And sometimes I think it's good to have those two views and then make your mind up. Um, so that was really important. We work a lot with local uh, services, again, for them to understand how to work with new communities. And we work, I think there's another thing that, that happened that was really important for us to show that common history. Lots of people talk to us about what happened, you know, when, when it happened after Brexit. Lots of people were saying, wow, don't you remember what some people did during the World War II? And I think that was as well important. Yeah, we have a common history that runs a little bit longer than the last few years. Um, I think what happened with Brexit, for me, it was a shock, but I was, I was wrong previously about the, the, the national elections, <coughs> about Polish elections, so it, it was shock and it was unfortunately really negative with the kind of ways of discrimination that happened to the uh, social media. For me, it was heartbreaking because I felt so good here and seeing those messages of discrimination on the media was terrible, <coughs> but what for me was really uplifting is that felt like it was different. We actually got so many messages of support through the Facebook, phone calls, letters, cards. It was actually so touching because when we heard about the vote to leave, it felt like it was ordered for us to leave because the migration was such a big topic during the referendum. But like I said, I think Liverpool felt so different and what was fantastic that actually media decided to publish the story that Liverpool uh, is supporting the local communities. And again, that was really important because they always seem to kind of look for the positive <coughs> ones. I think there's, there's lots of things for me in, in the politics that are sometimes contemplated and some of those issues that were blamed on the EU actually should have been blamed on the central government. If the migrants pay taxes, why they are not really invested in those areas where there's a high number of migrants? And I think maybe that's some discussion that we will actually want to still continue. And um, Paul asked me as well to talk about hopes. I think my hopes are that the community leaders will be more recognized. I'm not a politician, I won't be, but I'm a community leader and I feel really strongly about it. And I feel that we can make a difference. Whatever you live, whichever group you're part of, you can make a difference. I'm grateful for Paul to invite me today because I think what's really not happening sometimes is just having a chance to talk about it and discuss things and exchange views uh, because otherwise it kind of runs to, to do bad things. So I'm here, I'm hoping to stay here and be still very much involved and uh, if you want to be involved with what we do, uh, contact me. Okay, thank you. Particularly about the young people's take on things, James. 
Yeah, yeah. Um, so I, I think uh, basically, basically where I start is I work for kinship carers, um, and I don't know what you all know about that. They're a wonderful organisation that basically um, work with the, the, the biggest grey areas in the community. So people who are overlooked. Um, this is grandparents who look after uh, their grandchildren with uh, very little support, but but, but us. Um, and, and we do what we can to the voluntary sector. Um, also, I work with, uh, I do like uh, youth groups for the Phil City Council. Oh, I'd like to do to speak up a bit. So. Oh, sorry. Was that a heavy? Did you catch that? I <laughs> 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 um, Where was I? Oh, yeah. Um, Looking after grandparents. <laughs> <laughs> so, basically, why I'm here um, is to find out what, what Liverpool and these six different parts of Liverpool, what our focus is, what, what you know, <coughs> we're all really passionate, and young people especially, um, I, I know that, you know, what happened with a lot of young people being young myself, um, there's been a resurgence in young people interested in politics. <coughs> and I, I just wanted to know what, our focus is the pool is are we gonna to work together through austerity through these really harsh, terrible times um, that I think are coming. Um, and yeah, that, that's basically it. It's not as interesting or as long as that's right, that's right. What, 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 what are you people that you have experienced? And what do you think of the politicians in the um, Yet. Sorry, I'll rephrase that. How marvellous are the politics? What do you, what are young people saying about politics, and what are, what are they saying they want to be done in their lives? Um, I, you know what? I think I think there's uh, mass mass kind of confusion. I think uh, we've got a, a lot of my friends who are very far left, um, and I suppose I am as well. Uh, I don't want to. <coughs> And we're all kind of just heartbroken at the minute, you know, we're just, obviously there's uncertainty and there's, you know, that's what life's kind of about, life is uncertain, especially, you know, for a young, you know, young person, but I mean, we, we, we just kind of want to, you know, get this energy and, and this focus and just kind of work together to strengthen bonds within the city and with, with other regions of, of England and even within the world and Europe still. With what, with what's going on. So. And the three big priorities for you as a young person to change what you're doing. Sorry to keep that spot. You asked me. Well, you said if you drive off, I'm going to stop. I prefer that because it's a terrible speaker. Um, sorry, the three. Yeah. What's the big priorities for you, Paul? What would you really love to happen to young people? I'd love more opportunity. Um, so, for, for where? Uh, training uh, for housing. <coughs> um, I, I don't know. I, I think there's some now where 21 to 30 odd year olds are not going to get housing elements. Um, so I don't know how, how people are going to move out or what, you know, how that's going to affect next year's society and whatever. Um, and care leaders as well. I think there's a lot of. What's that about care leaders? Well, there's a lot, isn't there? Um, I just don't, I mean, where, where, where are the, you know, where are the, I don't know, I can't really expect, where are the opportunities going to be for our, our people of tomorrow if our youth centres are closing down, if the people who are really ingrained in society of our social workers are, you know, overwhelmed with work and they're not treated within the right ways or portrayed in the right ways in the media, if our, you know, voluntary centres, you know, kinship who, who, who uh, Paul, you know, the on the spot as well, you know, we, what we do alongside that, you know, what, what is that? You know, uh, what you do, uh, yeah, thank you very much. For Over to you, Odette. Hi, my name is Odette, and I'm a mom of three. 
Um, I came to Liverpool in two December 2011 and my son, my first child, was very challenging and he didn't like the change. So, um, 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 our Kensington Shores Hat was like a place where I could take him, that he could really be himself. Apart from that, you take him anywhere, normally you take a child to the park, but that child will play and play, but my son will not play at the park. He would love to go to the Shores Hat, just have the little room there for himself. He, that was where he was happy. And then all of a sudden, uh, was it 2015, they tried to shut it down. Can you imagine? I was like, no way, this is not happening. Though he was old enough, he was now in school and stuff, but I was like, me and my other, uh, and other moms and the staff of the Shore Start and the volunteers, we all fought. And the other Shore Start in, the, in um, Liverpool, we all came together and put our foot down that this is not going to happen. And we fought through it, and we got two years. I don't know if we're gonna fight again, but if they bring, if they bring the fight on, we're ready. We 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 going, we we going through it. You know, there is no way we're gonna let them shut shut down our show start. Though our kids are going, but other kids are being born, and they are gonna use those shows that we want to see it stay there. And I've done some work with the library as well when they were trying to make people who don't that. Though I don't work at the library. But I do take my kids sometimes just to go sit down with the book and, and stuff like that. And we fought for that as well, and it's still standing there. Um, what, 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 is, what is worrying for me now is the challenges that the people in Kensington are facing. Like when you walk on the street, you see the young kids, young, fit kids, they should be out there. If they should be in school, they should be in colleges, they should be in places, even at work. But no, they aren't. They are just hanging around and the gangs are using them for stuff, for robbing and, you know, abuse and all that kind of stuff. And it breaks my heart to walk past and see them like that. I'm thinking, what can, what can the government do? What can the community do? What can we do to get these kids off the street? There is nothing I can do apart from coming here and get my voice in heard, or get what the people of, of from Kensington are thinking and are feeling because we're not happy at all, especially with the adult services. In 2012, I was really, really depressed and I had two kids and I was begging for help. I will ring social services. You know, who has ever run social services for themselves? They don't. <laughs> I was crying out for help. But there was, there was, all they, all they would ask me is, do you feel like you're going to help the child? No. Are the children okay? Yes. Okay. We'll, see, we'll come and see you tomorrow. They're coming to check the kids. But they don't care about how I feel, my mental health, what is going on with me. I need, to be, I need to be well enough to look after my kids. We don't have that kind of services. We need adult services, and it is, we're lacking this, not just in Kensington, but in so many other areas. When I go to different meetings, I hear these stories. It breaks my heart. What, what are the politicians doing about this? Are we gonna ever get any help or not? Should people start dying, committing suicide before something is gonna happen? We need help. We are crying out, not just crying, we are screaming out loud. We need help. And that help is going to come yeah. one day, because we are not going to stop fighting. No, we are not going to back up. We won't. We have to see that, we have to see the change in our community. And, and what I figure out is, like I see, what I've noticed in my community is that there is this cycle of not doing anything. Wake up in the morning, drop the kids off at school, come back home, sit outside, have a chat, have a ciggy, and life goes on and on. That's it. That circle has to break. And the children copies what their parents are doing. And it goes on and on and on. And that's why I feel like in Kensington, it's very, the, the, the poverty level, or I can use the word, deprivation, it's so bad down there that I feel that like we need intervention. 
We need to break this cycle. We need to get to this young kid. Get, give them one, one to one support. Tell us support that, uh, that, uh, that, uh, that, uh, that will suit their needs. Go, go, go to this kid, because they will never come for this support. They won't. And if we're not out there to look out for them, who else is going to look out for them? Mom and dad doesn't want to look out for them because they, they don't feel like it's a big deal. But these kids are our future, they are our future generation. These are the future stars. We need to help them, pick them up, not leave them down there like, okay, if your mom doesn't want to do anything about you, what's my business to me? No, it's our business. Definitely our business. And we've got to do something about it.